Over the past few weeks, I've been working on my Blender add-on for Godot and making some YouTube videos, but it's occurred to me that I haven't really explained why anyone might want to use this add-on. So to give some clarity on this, I'm going to quickly go over the options for importing from Blender to Godot, and you can see what makes sense for your game. So the first one we're going to look at is bringing in your .blend file directly into Godot. It's pretty easy to set up. You just go to editor settings and you set the Blender program path. And then the other thing you need to do is go to project settings and just enable it. When you do that, you'll probably have to save and restart. Once all that's set up though, it's basically as simple as just saving your scene and then it'll automatically get re-imported by the engine. In the back end, it is basically a GLTF file. And if I wasn't doing any of the additional GLTF stuff, I think this would be fine. However, I can't really inject any of the stuff I wanna put in here because this importer doesn't allow custom data from Blender to get attached to um, the, the objects when they come in. So that's basically how my importer works is I'm attaching a bunch of custom data, bringing it into the importer and then doing things based on that custom data. It's basically like an extended version of the hints, uh, the Godot hints that they have. And speaking of import hints, let's take a look at what the actual GLTF uh, import hints are. And just so I'm clear, these import hints would work with the, the .blend file importing I just showed, or if you did a pure GLTF export from Blender. But basically they have a whole bunch of different options where you can put these import hints at the end of your um, mesh name in Blender so that you get some of these functionalities. So for example, if you wanted to create a collision, you would put dash col at the end of the mesh name. So in Blender, let's take this um, cardboard box, for example, I want to have a collision around this, you put col. Now, the problem I had with this is that it's fairly restrictive in, in terms of what you can do. The Collision basically is going to do a static collision. It's going to create, I believe, a tri-mesh collision, which is fairly complex. And then convex collision, which will work with rigid bodies, is also a fairly co uh, complex collision. So there are some other options here, but what I was basically stuck on is there isn't, there aren't enough options for what I wanted. I wanted to be able to use um, cylinder collisions. I wanted to be able to use box collisions. And I also wanted to be able to compose complex collisions of many different collision shapes and attach them to a rigid body or static body. And I wanted the flexibility to do that inside Blender. The last option I want to talk about here is the Blender ESCN exporter. This is probably the one that is the most promising, I guess, in terms of the features it has. But what concerns me about it is that it is a completely different file format um, compared to GLTF. So, you know, on the one hand, GLTF is a standard file format where, you know, the developers of Godot are just conforming to that standard and, and likewise for Blender. So they kind of meet in the middle. This is an add-on that gets installed into Blender, much like my own add-on. But of course, it depends on that sort of custom format. The other thing that kind of concerns me is that they do say the exporter is experimental, it still lacks many features, and if you need a full featured import export, consider using GLTF 2.0. Additionally, when you go to the Godot documentation, they do recommend using GLTF for export. So I don't know exactly what their reasons are for this, but I assume it has something to do with the fact that you know, all of this stuff in GLTF, animations, meshes, material, all that, it's already been planned. The data structure is already there. The two pieces of software, Blender and Godot, they just have to conform to it. So I want to try to motivate this with a demo. And I have a scene here that I modeled last night. And so the first thing I want to do is add a bunch of collisions to the scene. So if I identify any objects that I think could have a box collision, I can just click them all. Um, select them all at once, go to my add-on, hit box, and then set collisions. So that's going to set the collision type as well as the size on all of these instances. Um, it's kind of nice because even if the objects are rotated or scaled, um, those collisions will still work inside the game engine. 
The next thing I want to do is I want to create collisions for the walls, but I don't want to just make a simple convex collision. Um, that would work, but it would be unnecessarily complex for the engine to calculate. If I duplicate this and put a solidify modifier on it, I can actually turn this into a whole bunch of box collisions and it really doesn't take too long to set up. So once my solidify modifier is set, I'm just going to put on x-ray mode. And what I do is I take each one of the walls and I just separate by selection. So I'm gonna create a whole bunch of wall objects here. In some cases, I'll also simplify the mesh. So I can see there's an edge here I don't need. So I just dissolve that edge and then go ahead and separate that surface to get another collision object. Once that's done, I select all the wall pieces and I can just make box collisions out of all of them. In this case, I want them to be collision shapes only and I want to display wireframe because the wall um, mesh is separate. The wall itself, I'm going to set as a body only collision so that it has the static body 3D and we can see that there, it has body only. Next, we're going to take a look at instanced meshes. So this is two different objects that use the same underlying mesh data and how we can apply collisions to those. So in this case, I have these two cardboard boxes. They both use the same underlying mesh. You can see here, they both use the cardboard box mesh. So in my add-on, you just have to set it to box as you normally would and hit apply to mesh and then it'll apply the collision settings to the mesh rather than the object in Blender. The next one I wanna look at is this object that has an array modifier on it. So we can't really use the add-on in the normal way for anything that has an array on it because if you change the origin using the bounding box, it's not actually going to work properly. We need the origin to stay where it is so that the array works properly. What we can do is we can throw a cube around it and then put a shrink wrap modifier on that cube to get it to wrap to the underlying object that has that array on it. Once you have your shrink wrapped cube, we can then set a collision only collision and set display wireframe on it. Once that's done, we look at the bookshelf object and set a body only collision to it. And what this will do is this will give the bookshelf the collision object. And by parenting the collision shape to it, we'll get the collision shape attached to the collision object in Godot. That's why we do that parenting. So I'm gonna repeat that process here. Take a cube, we can wrap it to the bookshelf. You can see I use X-ray mode to kind of help with that process. Apply the modifier convert this to a collision only box collision. Then we set the body only collision on the actual bookshelf mesh. And then I parent the collision object to the bookshelf, which is what keeps that structure in Godot as well. Okay, so with all of that done, we can go ahead and export the GLTF using the button here on the bottom. And as I explained in a previous video, that file path will stay. So the export button really is pretty quick to use. Once we get back into the scene here, um, my camera was way off, but when we get into the scene, we can see that the collision shapes have been applied to all of these objects. If you look closely, you'll be able to see the blue line that wraps around all of them. We're gonna do a quick run in the game just to make sure the collisions work and we can make sure that we stop, that the player stops when it runs up against all the objects. One thing that I haven't really talked about is how you can iterate on these scenes. 
and I may have missed, you know, describing this very well. But the whole point of this add-on is that I can take objects in the scene, for example, this bookshelf, I can move it around. And as long as I move the parent, the collision will follow. All I have to do is press export, clear the old scene, drop in the new scene, hit make local, and it all comes in. So yes, there are a couple clicks in there. Um, but what I get out of that is basically full control of what these objects do inside the GLTF scene. Then if I get to a further point in level design where I'm done with Blender for the basic, you know, uh, level design aspect of it, I can actually do the rest in Godot and kind of leave Blender behind. So that's probably something I really haven't mentioned, but iterating on these scenes is it's pretty easy.